appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning and talk a little bit about the Department of Land's acquisition efforts, their timberland acquisition efforts. Um, I thought I'd give you um, maybe a little background timeline of what we've been through as an agency and why we're in the we're in this mode of acquiring timberlands at this point. Um, and a little little history, I guess. Um, it's pretty easy. You sold uh, uh, waterfront real estate, and landlord said buy land. Yeah, we saw. That's, that's the short story, isn't it? Yeah, we yeah. sold residential and we sold commercial buildings in Boise. Yeah. And uh, that put about 150 million dollars in the land bank fund, and then the. The uh, land board had to make a decision of what they were going to do with those land bank funds, whether to reinvest that into land or to move it into the permanent fund. So they hired a uh, firm to do the analysis, and the firm recommended um, Callum and Associates back in 2015, and that recommended that the land board reinvest in timberland and farmland if it met certain um, return expectations. 3.5% net real on timberland, or 4.5% net real on farmland. Um, that was back in 2015, their original analysis. They redid their analysis in 2017 and reaffirmed that same um, hurdle rate, if you will, and um, saying that we should, the land board should consider investing in timberland and farmland. So we have been working on timberland acquisitions. We've looked at various farms. Um, but we have not acquired any farms. Uh, we've not been able to meet that hurdle rate, to be very frank about it. On the timberlands, we have um, looked at private timberland, industrial timberland, and we've also explored the possibility of acquiring uh, federal timberlands. Um, that is a very um, there is no, right now, authority for the Forest Service or other federal land managers to sell timberland. They can do exchanges, but the ability for them to sell timberland is, does not exist right now. Um, we have private landowners who have approached the department on buying their timberland because they would like to sell for the state. We might go on around them. They're looking to dispose. Um, you're well aware that we uh, bought the 32,000 acres here in December from Malpas. Um, about a little over 13,000 acres were here in Benoit County. It was, the 32,000 acres was scattered across five counties. Um, the, that breakdown is on the first page for you. Um, I wanted to share with you some of the feedback. I think uh, when I went around in, uh, back in 20, spring of 2015, um, the director, Tom Schultz, myself, and our division administrator, Bob, visited with, um, I think, nine counties. We also uh, met with various groups and um, industry folks. And while there were concerns, general concerns expressed about taking private timberlands off the tax rolls, some of the things that we heard, at least from uh, several county and county commissioners, were uh, they saw that the lands would stay open for recreation. They knew the risks of these lands being bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold, and then locked up. Um, they understood that if, um, as when the endowments buy them, they would re remain open for public recreation. So they saw a value in that. Um, the other thing I think that they saw was uh, the jobs piece. Um, for example, this acquisition, 32,000 acres, uh, sustained somewhere between 200 to 220 jobs. About 94 of those jobs, when you look at the acreage, would be in Benoit County. Um, that is based on U of I's policy analysis group. That's one of the reports right there. Um, based on the direct and indirect jobs sustained. Those are family wage jobs. One of the misconceptions about this ground is that it won't generate any increased revenue to the schools. Most of this ground that we bought was public school land bank funds, so most of it, there's a breakdown here on that first page. A lot of this ground has a lot of young growing stock, zero to 30 years old. Um, 
not only did the company retain five-year timber reservations, so they will continue to generate volume off that ground, but what it will do within a cup, within about two years, is we roll that ground into our new sustained yield. That allows us, because we have existing ground around here and in all the counties, our sustained yield goes up. At a minimum, it means at least a 10 million board foot sustained yield jump, which means at minimum $3 million a year in additional revenue to public schools, which is distributed. So it's not 20, 30 years out that million there's a benefit. That's distributed statewide, isn't it? Yes, and now you can see on the handout, I put the five counties on here for the distributions. Benoit County is the first one on the list. Two school districts in 16, it was 168, and 17, almost 188, and then 2018, 240. The distributions are projected to continue to go up at a minimum of 3.5%, if not more. When you look at the percent increases over 16, in 17, it went up 11.5% over 16. It took a jump of almost 20,000. In 18, it took a jump of over 72,000 over 16, which meant a 40, almost a 43% increase. That endowment distribution is directly tied to the management of these endowment lands as well as interest on the permanent fund. So the bulk of that revenue, revenue comes from an Timberland management. Um, last year we generated about 66 to 67 million in the timber sale program. This year it'll be in the same ballpark to set somewhere between 65 and 70 million. That is then distributed to the various endowments. 85% of that is public schools. So that gets distributed statewide. Mm -hmm. We do not control that distribution formula. It is the distribution formula for endowment, the earnings reserve money that we give them at the end of every year is controlled by the State Board of Education. And they distribute that, if I understand their formula right, it's simply based on student population. Yes, that's how it is, yeah. So that's the, my understanding of um, but there is a there is a jobs piece. There is a um, the schools do benefit um, by us uh, by acquiring more land and, and increasing our sustained yield on our existing land base um, because that young growing stock means all that future growth is coming on. That allows us to uh, more actively manage our existing land base, which means. Uh, higher sustained yield and more revenue. Well, I understand you're, or you're paying the school, schools more money for your, with your increased cut. But what it shows here is, is the county is paying the schools to $65,000 more taxes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why we put that on there. We, we wanted, we were... So you guys, if you up your cut where they get $75,000 more per year, for instance, like in 18, then if we county pay sixty-five thousand of that, we lost taxes. I'm not sure I'm following. Well, I'm not sure what portion of the county taxes goes to schools and what part goes to other. So I don't know your. I don't know the proportion that goes to school from what. Why do you guys get rid of the industrial property in uh, in Boise? Why don't we get rid of the you sold, you sold some industrial property, you said, in Boise or some warehouses? Or? Um, we sold, um, most of what we sold, we sold one, what was called affordable self-storage, a storage unit. Um, most of what we sold were buildings in Boise where we were leasing office space and that. Um, so most of the buildings that we sold in Boise, other than affordable self-storage, were were office buildings. When you guys did your analysis, did you look and see how if you bought large uh, acreages of land in, say, a real county like Benoit or Clearwater or Shoshone, how that would, what kind of a tax shift that would do to the local residents there at all? So several of the counties that I met with um, indicated, at least um, to me, when I met with them, that um, 
they understood, they, they kind of, I gave them the numbers as far as the acreage and the tax implication. They quickly kind of did the mental calculation, I guess, on what that might mean. And for many of them, they felt that that was a very small amount. Um, and for example, a county like Bonner County, so um, with the sale of residential up there, that put 150 million of taxable value onto the market. Well, they benefited really good, but we didn't have any land uh, waterfront property to acquire around here. And you folks, how many acres do you own in Benoit County right now? We own 50. It's um, it's. It's right on 60,000, isn't it? Yeah, it was 57 to 58,000 yeah. acres. Every 5,000 acres is another 1% of the whole county. You bought 15,000 acres in the last three years. And uh, that comes off the tax rolls and that makes a big shift to the homeowners. Plus on top of the override that we've been trying to run, almost all of that comes out of the St. Mary's School District. So you're really putting screws to the people of the St. Mary's School District that pay property tax. And to me, it's just plain wrong. You guys shouldn't even be here. It should be the land board, someone from the state land board, trying to justify coming into a county like mm -hmm. Benoit and, and destroying their tax base uh, by buying huge chunks of land and taking it off the tax roll. It's just mm -hmm. plain wrong. That's why you guys got rid of the property in downtown Boise, because they complained about uh, uh, not being on the tax rolls and, and, and the state being in conflict with private industry, but you're doing the same damn thing here in Benoit County, and uh, there's no way you can sit there and justify uh, buying more land and saying it's going to uh, go back to the schools because if you, using your own figures here, it took $64,000 worth of taxes off on that one uh, sale, so you times that by 60000 I guess for $4.80, 4 4.8 times 60. That's, that's right at, uh, that's right, it's 60,000 times 4.8. That's essentially, uh, if we got tax on all of it, that'd be essentially $288,000 that, uh, that you would be paying the county and that the land would be generating for the county, and that would be that much less that the, the rest of the landowners would have to pay. Now, we got, our county got burned here a few years ago when the Coeur d'Alene tribe had all of their non-trust land, all the taxes removed from that, and it was all in the Plummer Worthy School District just about. And because of the tax shift and having to run an override, our taxes went up 20% over there, and there was no 20% uh, increase of uh, benefits from that increase at all. And um, that was real. The ones that are going to have to explain the taxes going up are uh, Bob, Jack, and I, not you guys. Uh, actually, uh, to me, it's, if, if you guys can't figure out how to uh, put in there, uh, some way to compensate the schools, at least for the uh, lost revenue for the land you want to buy in the county. You shouldn't buy another goddamn acre in the county, as far as I'm concerned. For lost revenue yeah. to the schools? Yeah. I'm, well, I, I'm not I'm not here to tell you I can make the county whole. Yeah, you, should, I, you, shouldn't, I, even, you shouldn't even be trying to, trying to justify it. It should be someone from the land board, the governor, the Attorney General or somebody else, you should be out there managing the timber line. Like, you're probably, it's probably not even in your job description to be here. Well, let me let me put it this way: um, I do have a responsibility to be here. That's why I'm here today, as as the deputy director and state forester. I don't want to okay. I don't want to deflect it on anybody else. You know the outreach to the counties. We, nobody showed up here to talk to us about it prior to prior to purchasing. It says. Uh, IDL staff met with individual county commissioners prior to the purchase. Did you meet anybody? I didn't. We don't think they ever talked to us we about didn't, our not ground. Not a goddamn word. The ground we we own. Yeah. But the point that I'm wondering, why why would Stimson be upset about this? Um, Stimson's upset. 
and I can't speak that you would have to talk to Keith Williams from Stimson. They're upset because they're trying to acquire Timberland as well. They just bought, um, they just bought, uh, I forget how many, 30 or 40,000 acres over in Libby, Montana area from Warehouser, right? And they bought land from Potlatch during the economic downturn yeah. down here. Um, they are looking at Timberland. Um, as you all may remember, Keith Williams actually worked for Mopus. Uh, so he knows very well what what it would take to buy those timberlands. They have the same access to acquiring the timberlands as IDL does. So it's not where Malpas is upset because they're trying to acquire timberlands from Lake Ta County North. But Stimson would pay taxes on it, wouldn't he? So yeah, that's 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 the difference, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. But there's enough. But and, I guess the 